Now Mendelian genetics is about genetic principles that were discovered after Mendel's original contributions. One of the most important of these involves linked genes. What are linked genes? Describe their inheritance pattern and explain which Mendelian rule linked genes don't follow. To help you study, I've put together a checklist that you can download at apbiosuccess.com slash checklist. Linked genes are genes that are on the same chromosome. So fruit flies, as opposed to peas, were the widely used experimental organism to discover the principles of non-Mendelian genetics. And here you can see one chromosome from a fruit fly, and there's a whole variety of genes, sequences of DNA that code for specific traits that are located on the same chromosome. One has to do with this kind of bristled appendages on the head, one controls body color, one controls one type of eye color, one controls wing length. These genes are mostly inherited together, which is different from the independent assortment that we saw with Mendelian genetics. Because they're on the same chromosome, these genes don't independently assort. So like for example, above, genes T and A in this cell over here, they're linked. In this cell over here, they're not linked. These would independently assort and these wouldn't. So what happens in crosses involving linked genes? Note, first of all, that we have a different symbol system over here. You can see that right over here. We have B plus, B plus, VG plus, VG plus. In this system, in non-Mendelian genetics, a plus sign indicates the wild type or the dominant allele. If you have a symbol that can be more than one letter without a plus sign, that indicates the recessive. In this P cross, what we're doing is we're crossing normal body, normal winged fly, B plus, B plus, VG plus, VG plus, with a black bodied vestigial winged fly. Those are both recessive traits. And note that all the F1 offspring are dihybrid. They're B plus B, VG plus VG, and they have both dominant phenotypes. This is what you'd expect in a Mendelian trait for the F1s. We have a gray body and normal winged fly, which has all of the dominant characteristics. Now over here, what we're doing is we're representing this chromosomally. B plus VG plus and BVG. Notice that B plus and VG plus, they're on the same chromosome and BVG are on the same chromosome too. These genes are linked. What if they were perfectly linked and they never separated? What would you expect to happen? The method here is a little bit different than the method in a Mendelian cross. We're not doing a dihybrid cross, we're doing what's called a test cross. And a test cross, a dihybrid, so B plus B, VG plus VG, is being crossed with a double recessive. And the way that it's done is the double recessive is the male, the female is the double hybrid, the double recessive. I've represented this over here. Here's a representation of the female. On one of her chromosomes, she'll have B plus and VG plus. On the other chromosome, she'll have B and VG. The male is a double mutant and he has B and VG on both of his chromosomes. When the female produces gametes, then half of her gametes will have a B plus and VG plus and half of her gametes will have B and VG. Now that's assuming perfect linkage. In the male, all of the sperm have to have B and VG. Here's a Punnett square. These are the eggs that's going here. The other eggs are going here, the other half of the eggs, and all of the sperm are going over here. You put them together and what you'd expect is that half of the offspring would be B plus B, VG plus VG. The other half of the offspring would be B, B, VG, VG. This organism, these offspring would have normal body and normal wings, that's 50% of the offspring, and the other 50% of the offspring would have black body and vestigial wings. But that is not what happens. And what I'm doing here is I'm letting you know what you would expect if there were perfect linkage. What actually happens in a cross involving linkage? Note that the numbers won't always be the same, but the general concepts apply. What we see is that the majority of the offspring have parental phenotypes. What does that mean? Well, the mom's phenotype was gray body with normal wings and 
Many of these flies have that phenotype, gray body, normal wings. The father's phenotype is black body with vestigial wings. Many of the offspring have that phenotype, but a significant number of offspring have recombinant phenotypes. What are recombinant phenotypes? They take one of the phenotypes of the mom and they combine it with one of the phenotypes of the dad. That's what's happening over here in these flies that have a gray body like the mother and vestigial wings like the father. Or you can have a black body like the father with normal wings like the mother. Those are recombinant phenotypes. Why do we have most of the offspring having parental phenotypes, but a significant minority having recombinant phenotypes? It's because linkage is not perfect. Genes that are linked don't always stay together. Why not? Because during meiosis, there's recombination and crossing over. So linked genes, because of that process, can separate. We'll see the details of this in the next slide. Your success in AP Biology starts here. Are you struggling with AP Bio? With learn-biology.com, students get the skills and confidence to be a top student and earn fours and fives on the AP Bio exam, guaranteed. Go to learn-biology.com to find out how you can master your biology course and crush the AP Bio exam. What happens in crosses involving linked genes? Why are there recombinants? In diagrams A and B, we have a dihybrid female and her germ cells. In C, we have meiosis one with crossing over. We have homologous pairs. They're gonna to get together. They're gonna to swap genes and the production of recombinant chromosomes. But notice that some of the sister chromatids are recombinant and some aren't. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna complete meiosis, we're gonna go through gamete formation, and when we do that, note that of the eggs that the female produces, two of them at letter H, they're recombinant. What do I mean by that? Well, they have B plus and they have VG. In other words, this chromosome is B plus VG plus, this chromosome was B VG. Well, the recombinant ones are the ones where those allele swapped places. So this is a recombinant B plus VG, this is a recombinant B VG plus, but these two at letter I, those are parental, right? They're just like the parents, B plus VG plus B VG. Now over here, we have the male parent who's a homozygote and his gamete, he can only produce one kind of gamete. He's homozygous. He can only produce a gamete that has B and VG. Here's what happens with the offspring. Offspring N and P have recombinant phenotypes. In other words, they have, in this case, gray body vestigial wings. That's recombinant. Neither of the parent looked like that. And this is black body normal wings. Again, recombinant. Neither of the parent looked like that. But O and Q are parental phenotypes. O is gray body normal wings and Q is black body vestigial wings. Why are there so many more parentals than there are recombinant phenotypes? It's because crossing over happens, but it happens at a rate that's dependent on the distance of these alleles on the chromosome. And so the closer two alleles are, the less they'll tend to cross over. And this frequency, which is, I believe, 17%, that represents the distance between the B allele and the VG allele on the fruit fly's chromosomes. What's the relationship between the percentage of recombination and the distance between any two linked genes? The further apart any genes are on the chromosome, the higher the percentage of recombinant gametes. In the chromosome map above, genes A and E will recombine the most because they're the furthest apart. In other words, there can be crossing over over here, over here, over here, and all of those will get E to jump over here and big E to jump over here. That's gonna look like recombination. That's gonna actually almost look like independent assortment because they're so far away but genes B and C, they'll recombine the least because the only way that they can cross over is if there's a chiasma right over here at this specific spot that would enable little C to jump over here, big C to jump over here, or B could do the same. The percentage of recombination can be used to calculate the map distance between 
two alleles. So over here, this is a chromosome map, and it's saying here that the distance between this long bristled appendages called long aristea and gray body, that's 48.5. Well, those are units that reflect the frequency of recombination. Over here between gray body and red eyes, that's a little bit under, that's nine recombination units. And really what this amounts to is the frequency of recombinance. So doing all of these mapping experiments or doing all of these breeding experiments with fruit flies, the researchers at Columbia University in the 1900s, Thomas Hunt Morgan and his crew, were able to create maps of chromosomes. And this was establishing that genes are on chromosomes and was part of the pathway that ultimately led to the double helix and all that other great stuff. Note that these are not physical maps so that the numbers don't add up, but this should get you far enough to have a basic understanding. Again, on learn-biology.com, I have a whole tutorial about linkage and recombination with practice problems that'll get you all the way there. Here are your next moves for AP Biosuccess. Please subscribe to learn-biology.com and please watch this next video.